I'd like to introduce Angela from England, who has multiple sclerosis. Welcome, Angela. Hi, Linda. Could you tell us when you first noticed your MS symptoms? Um, I think it was about six years ago, um, Mm -hmm. but I didn't know, obviously, that it was MS then. I think the first sign was when um, I noticed when I woke up in the morning that one of my legs was um, feeling very numb. And I think that went on for a couple of months and I just put it down to sleeping awkwardly or, you know, whatever. And being busy and working and with a family, I I just ignored it and it just went away and I didn't think anything more of it. Mm -hmm. Um, But then I think about five years ago, I'd come back from holiday in Canada and thought I had a virus and went back and forth to the doctors and they couldn't really diagnose what was wrong with me and then I lost all the feeling in my legs from my feet right up to my hips Mm -hmm. and obviously got admitted into hospital and you know for tests and was eventually diagnosed so so yes what impact sorry what impact did it have on you being diagnosed um was very tough really because um, I recently got divorced and it wasn't a great time and you know it might have been to do with the sort of stress of that situation Mm -hmm. Um, but um, my mother-in-law for my ex-husband actually had MS and she'd had it for many many years and you know I just thought I was going to end up in exactly the same state as she was which wasn't great, if I'm honest. So yeah, yeah. it didn't seem to be, um, you know, a, a, a great sort of, um, you know, the, the, there was no real treatment that she seemed to have and, you know, she could hardly walk. She was in a wheelchair and um, and basically didn't do anything with her life, you know. So it was, mm. um, so the thought of ending up like that, I think, was the scariest thing. Oh, it's a very scary prospect, isn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you know, when the consult, I just felt like the consultant who, when I first was um, in hospital, he said, "Oh, oh no, I think you're too old to have that um, MS," because I was about, oh, 46 at the time. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, when they did the MRI scan and um, and I came back to see him, he said, "Well, no, actually, you have MS." And um, thank you very much. Bye bye. Um, and handed me over to the MS nurse to <laughs> pick yeah. you up off the floor. You know, the, the um, consultants aren't that great at dealing with the fallout, are they? You know, so. Um, but I just found it really difficult to talk to anyone because I, you know, I, I just had in my mind this picture of my, my mother-in-law, you know. Mm. So, um, so, no, it wasn't great, no. But, uh, but then you pick yourself up, and I think, you know, they they review you after three months, don't they, to see whether you've got the the real nasty type, you know, and, and mm-hmm. if you're sort of okay after three months or so, then, you know, maybe you realise it's not as bad and you, your life still can carry on, even with this diagnosis, you know, so. Yeah. So what was your MS like before you found LDN? Um... I think it was getting steadily, I think, I mean, they say, oh, I have a benign type or a, you know, they don't really, I don't think I have the relapsing remitting type, but every day I have symptoms. And um, I remember, oh, it was a Christmas time and my daughter had come up with me to try and go shopping. And I literally walked into next shop with my daughter we literally walked into the shop and I just had to say to her, I'm sorry, I've got to turn around and go home because I just felt I couldn't even walk around the shop because mm-hmm. my legs just felt so bad that day, you know. So it was like the numbness and the um, the weird sensations and it's like your, your legs were led, you know. So I just knew they weren't going to carry me around the shop, yeah. you know. So I, it had a huge effect on the quality of your life because, mm. you know, I, I was still working 
um, I'm still working now, uh, but I I just wonder without the LDN if I would still be working, you know, because I knew with that. I think the, the sort of extremes of temperature really affect me, and we were having a pretty cold winter, um, you know, it just sort of really limits what you what I could do, you know. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I don't think the LDN has had any miraculous effect, but I think it, um, most of the time, it keeps me stable and it hasn't got worse. I've had a bad virus Christmas time and I've had a few problems since then with the mobility, but I think that's down to the virus, you know. Mm. Um, so I think in terms of the fatigue and uh, I think it's had a huge effect, you know, on just keeping me going and keeping me well, you know. But where I would be, I think it's kept me stable. I I don't know where I would be if, you know, it just doesn't bear thinking about really. But, but I know at that time I was really starting to struggle. And yet for the next sort of two years until I've had this virus now, you know, uh, the mobility has, hasn't been perfect by any means, you know, but it, it definitely improved things. Mm -hmm. And I think it gave me a bit more confidence. You know, I mean, you sort of tend to think, like, no, I can't go out, I can't do this, I can't do that. And it, it all gets a bit, um, a bit limiting, doesn't it, as to what you can do yeah. and what you can't do. So it, it did give me confidence. I mean, the only side effects I had were when I first started to take it, I have a lot of um, spasms in my legs and I had a lot of muscle stiffness in the first two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to make me worse. But I persevered with it and it's been, it's been fine. I haven't had any of the, um, the sort of uh, bad nightmares or anything like that. But I have tried taking... Um, taking the LDN in the mornings and that doesn't suit me. It suits me better to take it in the night. Mm -hmm. So I just take a tablet at night and that, that seems to have worked worked better for me. So so, yeah. so the so, symptoms you had other than walking and the, the heat affecting you, did you have any other side of... Uh, sorry, I'll say that question again. Did any, you have any, any other symptoms? symptoms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I had the usual sort of MS fog. <laughs> I've had the sort of really bad headaches and the, you know, feeling a bit spaced out, dizzy, and the fatigue, basically, was just um, horrendous. You know, it's all the u loss of sensation and, and all the usual. I had bladder problems for years, and I was taking, um, oh, uh, antibiotics because I, I was having constant what they thought were water infections, but now I realise all these years later that, you know, it was probably the MS. But now I haven't taken antibiotics for um, for water infections for over 18 months, I think. So I think it's definitely Good. had an effect there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's helped the bladder problems, it's helped the fatigue. Um, I think at one point I was starting to get, not depressed, but, you know, starting to get very down about it all. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's helped keep me positive with things because once you, you know, you lose your positivity, then you might as well give up, really, isn't you? Yes. So, so, so how, would, I, how would you compare your quality of life now as compare it with before LDN? Um, well, up until I've had this recent virus, you know, I would... I would try and sort of push myself to, um, you know, to do more or less what I used to do, but, you know, within limitations. I mean, I know I can't sort of go um, walking huge distances or anything, but, you know, I've kept working. I've kept trying to, you know, keep the standard of what I do in my work up to what I used to do. Um, and I, I just feel it stabilised me somehow, you know, it just, mm -hmm. I really didn't know where things were going to end up with all of this. It, 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 I just felt my general well-being was a, was a lot better, you know, so yeah. I think it was a lift 
to my energy levels, really, um, because I, the other things that I used to have were um, sort of problems with my eyes and sort of flashing lights and, you know, um, oh, I'd see lots of sort of spots in front of my eyes and things like that. I, I don't seem to have so much of that either, mm-hmm. you know. So I I guess I've got to rely on LDN and I, I keep on thinking, well, you know, I'm afraid not to take it now because I really <laughs> don't know where I would be because, it, you know, it might be a placebo. Some people might think it's a placebo, but I don't know. But... Um, you know, I just feel it stabilised me, certainly. I mean, like I say, this virus has given me a bit of a... Uh, because it was a bronchitis, and obviously that's the, the worst, really. But um, but I do think it, it, it's helped to keep me stable. So. What would you say to other people who are contemplating trying LDN? Well, you know, in the job I do, I've got lots of people... Um, because there's 9,000 sort of people in work, and some of them, unfortunately, also have MS. And they're very um, scared to take anything without this sort of uh, neurologist or doctor's advice. And, and what I would say is, as far as I'm aware, there are no side effects. I think for the type of MS that I have, there are no treatments, there are no drugs. It's not doing me any harm. It may be doing me a lot of good. So I don't think you've got anything to lose, really. You know, it's just, it's a Mm -hmm. no-brainer. Just, um, if it was a drug, I mean, some of the drugs, as I understand it, because, thank God, I've been lucky enough not to need them. But, I mean, if you take in, I don't know, is it methotrexate or something like that? It's basically poison, isn't it? So you're poisoning your system. I mean, they're drugs that they use for chemotherapy and, you know, so this is a drug that's been, as I understand it, in use for, you know, 20, 30 years. And, you know, there must be a body of research to show that there's, there aren't huge amounts of side effects with it because, again, as I understand it, it goes through your system within four hours and it doesn't affect any of your, your major organs or you know, anything else, so mm. why wouldn't you try it? <laughs> Just, but, but like I say, people are so, you know, I guess because I work in a hospital environment and, you know, the, the general public think doctors and a God, you know, and, and their word is, but they don't have all the answers, they really don't, you know, they're mm-hmm. human like the rest of us, well, most of them, you know, mm-hmm. so it's, I would just say give it a try because, you know, it might work for you, it might not. It might have fantastic results for some people. It might, you know, just like me, I think, keep you stable, you know. So, mm. and, and that's, you know, all you can ask for, isn't it, is to, it is. to try it, you know. But, um, but yeah, I, I really think you've got nothing to lose, you know, because the medical profession doesn't have all the answers all of the time, does it, you know, and yeah. and if enough of us are taking this and, and finding benefit from it, then there's got to be something in it, so. Well, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. That's okay, you're welcome. Now, I've also got to do a re-recording bit to go on the beginning, because I said you were from England and you're not, you're from Wales. I was going to say, yes. <laughs> So I'll just record that bit again. I'll just do the, okay. the introduction okay. again. That's all right. I didn't want to say because you were so tired. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> right. Shush a minute. <laughs> okay. I'd like to introduce Angela from Wales who has multiple sclerosis. Welcome, Angela. Hi, Linda. So that bit can be put in the beginning because it's going to be edited anyway. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And no I'm going to go to bed. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm good.